In this video, we're going to be talking about McLaren race operations, why they don't have racing IQ, why I don't believe McLaren Mercedes are to be considered a race team as opposed to being more of an engineering team. What is racing IQ? Who was to blame between Lando Norris and Max Verstappen down at turn 12 in Austin? There's been so much talk today in Mexico about, you know, we are the rules fair, so I'm just going to clear it all up for you guys. Um, McLaren are also appealing this as well, which I find laughable. Um, so if you're interested in what my thoughts are and how these rules work and what Racing IQ is, definitely keep watching. Okay, before we get on to all of the McLaren operations drama, I do just want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all the people in Argentina who supported me in my previous video. If you do just give me two seconds, I'll just send a quick message to them in Spanish. Hola a toda la gente en Argentina, muchas gracias por tu apoyo, muchas gracias por todos los mensajes que, que he visto en mi, en mi otro video, se llama ¿Por qué Franco Colapinto es especial? Uh, mucha gente de Buenos Aires, Córdoba, Mendoza, uh, estoy aquí para apoyar a Franco, claro, si él me necesita o necesita ayuda. Um, creo que tenemos un buen piloto, una buen, buena persona en Franco. Um, bueno, es un, algo tan especial y, y me gustaría ayuda, si puedo. Um, vamos a hablar sobre él en otros videos este fin de semana en México. We are going to talk about Franco Colapinto in other videos, not this one. So let's talk about McLaren racing operations and why, mate, where their racing IQ has gone. We need to talk about that. So let's go back to Austria for a second because Austria was a telling race and Austria showed me that McLaren racing IQ is not a thing. I consider them more of an engineering team than they are a racing team. And what's the difference between the two? Well, a racing team is someone that just gets it. They understand the sport. They understand the rules and regs. They know what you can do, what you can't do, what you can get away with, how to see. They've seen it all before. Experienced team who can make decisions quickly and confidently. That is racing IQ. McLaren don't have that. They're just kind of an engineering team on the pit wall who act in a very conservative way and that burns them so let's go back to austria because i want to highlight this to you and then we're going to talk about the hungries the bakus the monzas like all of the other mistakes that they've made so far and the austins as well but let me just play this clip from Aust um, austria and i'll show you why they don't fully understand the racing operation so let's bring that up now so this is lap 63 austria we're going to have a look at it together i'm going to show you where lando went wrong here where mclaren went wrong here why they don't have the racing iq that they need to convert let's play this and watch this together now in battles for the lead decided late on here between the so lap 63 lando's got a good slipstream he pulls to the inside Gets it done. Keeps it within track limits. Max is the one that goes outside track limits. What happened there? Lando completed a successful move. Max keeps the place outside of track limits. Do you think McLaren could wait two, three, four laps for a penalty to come their way and absolutely have confidence and faith in the rules that that position is theirs? No. What happens one lap later? Bang, they crash. Why? Because McLaren, again, they didn't have the patience. They don't understand how the rules work. Max owes them that place back 99% of the time. The stewards are going to hand Max a penalty for that. And McLaren couldn't be bothered waiting. The next lap, Lando attacks. Bang, they crash on lap 64. And it's all about, oh, he moved under braking, this, that. Well, hang on a minute. You've done the successful move. If you just had confidence and faith and racing IQ in what you've done and what you've executed, you would have been looking at a win there. This is the difference between profit and loss, guys. We need to highlight another couple of examples here as well. Uh, Monza, 1-2, McLaren lockout. How they lose that race is unbelievable. Why? Because they did a two-stop because they couldn't read the race. Again, racing operations. In Baku, Sergio Perez is undercutting um, Oscar Piastri in real time. You see the graphic come up on the screen. It's like Checo and and oscar and you see them like go like this eventually the graphic shows you that if oscar pits now he's going to be undercut so they're watching on the pit wall their own driver being undercut in real time just sitting there doing nothing about it and then they have to phone lando norris and say hey lando uh sergio's behind you 
can you please help us and just hold him up a little bit because we want to bring Oscar in this lap. Like, guys, again, racing IQ and engineering team, it's kind of embarrassing to be honest. So the third and final one, obviously we need to talk about Hungary because they were one, two on the grid, Lando, Oscar, and somehow managed to mess that up and get into a little bit of a confusion, like a little bit of a knot there and shot themselves in the foot when all they had to do was just execute the right moves on strategy. So what did they do? They pitted the wrong car first, reacted to the wrong things, got themselves in a bit of a knot, and then the whole race became about them trying to undo this and unpick this drama that didn't need to be a drama because it was obviously self-inflicted. So again, racing IQ, strategy, race operations, the guys just need to do a lot more work, unfortunately. Or save yourself doing the work and bring in someone with that knowledge, bring in a driver coach, bring in a mentor, bring in someone like a Jonathan Wheatley, like a racing operations. You've got to find some help there. You just can't sit in arrogance and just uh, lose points like that. I think that's also quite unprofessional. So these are examples along the way that show us the McLaren don't know how the game works, right? So obviously we've got to talk about Austin here. So in order to do that, let's bring up the whiteboard together and hopefully you can see that on the screen in front of you now we've got turn 12 on the left we've got the normal racing line highlighted in black here we're going to pick up the blue pen for max verstappen and say all right max did all his usual defense here and he pulled to the inside here and we're going to pick up the orange pen for lando who was following max and then had no choice but to go around the outside now here's the thing guys the rules are written such that there's guidelines and that's the first thing that we should say like what the hell is a guideline a guideline is not a rule or regulation it's just a framework for which we can pick things so forget the rules right forget the guidelines that's just a piece of paper that means nothing it doesn't matter who's ahead at the apex that's all nonsense as well because where is the apex everyone has a different rotation point if we just draw for example um, a decreasing radius corner give me a sec i'll draw this for you so let's put this to one side for a second. Let's draw a decreasing radius corner like nine, uh, like yeah, nine and ten in Bahrain, for example, that goes like that. What if you decide to take a short corner and you do your rotation like that? Where's your apex? Is it where you touch here or is it the rotation here? Like what is defined as an apex? So this can happen, right? In Hungary, uh, there's plenty of long corners of constant radius where a lot of the drivers are playing around with short corners and and doing their rotation in different points. So that whole who is ahead at the apex thing, it's nonsense, right? The only thing that matters is as follows. Who is in the inside and who is controlling the corner? That's the most important thing. When I coach my drivers, I always say, get to the inside, you're going to increase your chances of keeping the position or overtaking as well. Obviously, Max defends the inside, he protects that. So you're going to have to find another solution. You're going to have to be more creative. And we are going to talk about turn eight as well, which is this one here where I think Lando could have done a better job and would have given him more attacking options down this back straight. So let's talk about that for a second. So here we go. We've got the two drivers going into the corner. Now, the rules are very clear. You can't overtake off the track or you can't defend off the track either, as per Austria. You can't reinvent your own track and then just think that somehow, magically, you're going to get handed the position. Let's say, for example, if, if what they're saying is true, let's say, for example we look at this corner here, right? And Lando Norris in orange, he's just driving down here and he decides, you know what, I couldn't be bothered taking this corner. I'm just going to shortcut the track and overtake Max like that. Then Max, who goes around the corner, what if he happens to get a track limit strike here? It doesn't matter that Max has gone off and got a track limit strike. You can't reinvent your own corner and just shortcut the track or extend the track or make your own track just because you couldn't be bothered doing the overtake properly. It does not matter that Max has got a track limit strike on the same corner. You can't reinvent your own track and take a shortcut. So that's the first thing. If you want to pass Max Verstappen, you need to make sure that you're perfect before anything else. That is that you don't go off the track over here. Like you just keep the car within track limits and let Max be the one to go off the track. And then you can point the finger and say, hang on a minute. I've kept my car within track limits. He's gone outside track limits. What's going on here? At that point, you'd have half a case. I still don't think you'd have a full case and you certainly wouldn't be entitled to the place back. But 
you'd have half a case. If you go off the track yourself, you're in absolutely no position, and not to mention you, you complete the overtake off the track, you're in absolutely no position to talk or speak and say anything about what Max has done because you couldn't even be bothered keeping the car within track limits. You were not pushed off. You were on the outside, and that's totally different. Cool. So let's have a look here. So Max goes in. Now, look, I've drawn the natural racing line here because that's what Max is going to assume and presume having the inside line. So he's going to go here, and he's just going to assume and resume the normal racing line. Lando on the outside at one point, like, like there's not enough room for two cars here. Max doesn't need to leave you room. You are not entitled to any room. You don't deserve space. You don't deserve time. You don't deserve luxury of anything. You've got to earn the right to that, okay? Now, your risk here, if I'm speaking to Lando Norris, your risk is that you're on the outside. By putting your car on the outside, what do you expect to happen? Like the, the car in front can always just run you out of road. What you should have done if we just wind this back a little bit to increase your chances of the whole thing, why don't you just break around the outside, keep it within track limits, and then just resume a normal position. Max goes in deep. We saw him go off. He goes off here. You might have a case at that point. That might be a strike for Max on track limits. They may even look at that and say he's held a place and held an advantage by going off track. You need to be squeaky clean, my friend and keep the car within track limits as you did as per Austria. And when you do that, also have faith and have reassurance to say, hang on, I've kept the car within track limits. I'm owed that place back. So lack of understanding, lack of racing IQ. The guys need to do a lot more work. And instead of hiring more engineers, computer science engineers, software engineers, strategy engineers, aerospace, whatever engineers on the pit wall, just get someone on there that has a racing operations. You need a Jonathan Wheatley or even a driver coach who can just say like, this is how the game works and this is what you need to do. So I hope that's clear, guys. You can't ever take off the track. You need to be squeaky clean in order for you to put yourself a case forward. And then when you are squeaky clean, just have some faith that, you know, the rules and regs are going to take care of itself and you'll be owed that place back or you'll get compensated in some other way. All right, now let's talk about the appeal. So I've got it in front of me on my phone. It says, McLaren confirms that it has submitted a petition for a review relating to the decision to penalize Lando with a five-second penalty at the 2024 United States Grand Prix for leaving the track and gaining a lasting advantage, which we believe to be unfair. Well, that's what happened, guys. I mean, you left the track and gained the lasting advantage. And that, that one is pretty clear in the rules. So, you know... Anyway, we'll go on here. So uh, we believe there is a significant and new element that was unavailable to us at the time of the decision was made. I don't know what that is or that could be. They're pulling at threads. This looks desperate. Um, we have submitted the relevant paperwork. <laughs> Again, paperwork. <laughs> like, mate, um, I, I just explained that pieces of paper are just pieces of paper. Uh, you need racing IQ, you need to do the work. Uh, we have submitted the relevant paperwork with the FIA and we'll issue no further comment while this process is ongoing. Uh, we have the utmost respect for the FIA and the stewards for the difficult job that they do and appreciate the open and collaborative relationship we enjoy with them. This is embarrassing. This is... Like you've been humiliated. You got a free lesson in how to defend uh, by Max Verstappen. So I would take that as uh, a plus and a positive. Okay, let's talk about how Lando could have potentially increased his chances of getting this done, notwithstanding staying within track limits and all that jazz. Something a little bit more technical, something a little bit more uh, accessible. So this is turn eight over here. And this is where Lando was really struggling to get the front into the into this corner. Why? Because there was aero wash coming across like in this way from Max, pushing Lando back out. I'm just going to undo that so we can see the track. But there was aero wash coming. Lando's trying to turn, like you can see with my steering wheel, and get the front tires into this corner. But he couldn't. And the reason that I believe he couldn't, as per my Franco Colapinto video, was because I believe his line was a little bit too wide on entry. So if you imagine the wider you go out here, the more work you have to do to, to get that car in. Whereas what Franco was doing, let's draw him in beautiful blue here, uh, was kind of going in and just 
diving into that apex, you can see just by the two lines that I've drawn there, you know, one has a lot more bend in it than the other one. Frank goes into this corner a lot sooner. And why this is important is because if you play this on, if you play this on right down to the hairpin, this is the attacking zone. So in order to stay close to Max Verstappen before the attacking zone, before the DRS down here, I think all of the damage was really being done in turn eight. And what Lando was trying to do was get a good exit, but I wouldn't have prioritized exit. I would have prioritized looking after my front tires, avoiding dirty air and getting as close as possible and as early to the apex as possible underneath the rear wing of Max Verstappen so that he can pull me down this short straight here with a slipstream and I'm as close as possible here. That would have been my objective, not to get a good exit because Max is going to make up for that down here. It would be to take the Franco line, look after my front tires, get to the apex sooner, get underneath that rear wing as quickly as possible. And then I believe the job down here would have been fairly straightforward. I think together with the slipstream, the battery, the DRS and how long this straight is, I think Lando could have driven clean past Max with a few small changes to the turn eight right-hander. That's my personal and professional opinion on the matter. Look, I hope this video has helped you guys. I hope it's cleared it up. Honestly, it's just a common sense racing IQ approach to the whole situation. If you did have any thoughts or questions, please drop them down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next one.